South Africa has earmarked industrialization as a key factor for radical economic transformation to result in increased economic growth. With the establishment of programs like the Black Industrialist Program by the Department of Trade and Industry, the intention is to drive a broad, dynamic and competitive class of black industrial players that contribute meaningfully to the rest of the local and continental economy. The Next Generation Industrialists is an event aimed at putting South Africa's young industrialists in the spotlight. SABS Design Institute hosted a dialogue between these young industrialists with government officials and potential funders. The development of Next Generation Industrialists is a critical imperative as a response to the challenges of high youth unemployment and low entrepreneurship activity. This is the impetus behind the initiative of the Next Generation Industrialist Fair, hosted by the SABS Design Institute in Groenkloof, Pretoria. We caught up with some of the young industrialists at the event to find out more about how they were mentored to develop their inventions from ideas to products to markets in an accelerated manner. So uh, what the technology does is that the current toilet system would let water come in in the instance of a leak, constantly flowing. Our technology locks at a predetermined level, stopping the water, saving 70% of the water that would have been lost otherwise. Tell us about your invention and how it came about. What happens is when I was be, uh, doing my honors in nuclear physics, I had a problem with powering up my laptop and my cell phone. The battery was always running out. Then I had to look for ports where I can charge. Then it was affecting my schoolwork decimally. So then I started doing literature reviews on the technology that are in existence and how I can I improve how can I improve on whatever has been done before. That's when the idea came. Then I started looking for funds and people who can help me. That's when the business started, but I was not aware that I'm starting a business by then. Tell us a little bit more about your innovation and how it came about. Uh, this is a WinTech product, uh, generates electricity from uh, car, uh, what you call air resistance, passing, uh, gathered from cars passing by. Uh, well, the support was excellent. Uh, SABS, it helped us to, they taught us how to pitch uh, presentations. Basically, where we come from, we just designers couldn't talk, especially in an interview like this, I would be nervous. Uh, I wouldn't know what to say. So they basically taught us to uh, touch on key points, uh, especially also on the funding as well. They, they helped us, uh, they funded us to build up this uh, amazing product. It was just an idea just a few years ago. So now I'm just happy standing next to my partner uh, looking at the product up and running. Gavin Mangeni, who heads up the Design Institute, is the man behind Next Generation Industrial Sphere. He gave us a bit of background behind the event and why our young industrialists are so important to the future of South Africa's economy. I think it's important for us to understand that new jobs will not come from the existing landscape. And the Next Generation Industrial Sphere it's just to showcase to South Africa that new industries can be created by designing new products and services, and this is exactly what we're showcasing tonight. It's important to understand that any idea is just an invention if it does not create economic equity. So many and a multitude of new innovators that we showcase are underpinned by business models because the key principle here is to create new jobs. The economic equity is certainly an element that uh, we want to unfold. What kind of economic contribution can industrialists uh, contribute to the South African economy? I think it's a very, very broad question. If you just start looking at our country, 90% of the products that we import are the products that we could have manufactured locally. And the simple question around beneficiation, we export the raw material and we import the the product that is already completed. So that must give you an indication that in most of the times we actually pay a thousand percent more for something that originated from our country. So when we talk about economic equity or economic um, potential, the economic potential is vast. 
currently the 5 million that actually sustain the 52 million in terms of those that pay taxes, it becomes a critical area for us to explore and also taking into account that the next generation is virtually unemployed. So the question around economic equity and economic potential needs to be unfolded within this particular environment to create new industries. Tell us about the Design Institute's vested interest in cultivating uh, an arena or even a generation, if we can refer to it as such, of industrialists. The Design Institute is, will be 50 years this year and it was previously the economic manufacturing hub of this country. Five years ago, the SBS made a vested interest in reinvesting within the institute to capitalize on institutional knowledge, the 200 laboratories we're sitting here with, and the space where the Design Institute can bring specialists in product designers, industrial designers, but most importantly also business strategists. Our interest is for the country. Our interest is to create a space where somebody with an idea can come and it can be developed through ideation phase, straight through to commercialization by unlocking the different value chains that sits on the entrepreneurial landscape. Problem with our country is that we have very forward-looking industrial policies, we have very forward-looking SMME policies, but the landscape is fragmented. So for any entrepreneur that try to actually make a success, they're giving up within the first two, three years because they don't know where to go. And this is the space that we've created. At a recently held black industrialist in Daba, Trade and Industry Minister Rob Davies said that a 1 billion rand incentive scheme to support the creation of large and competitive black industrialists is to be made available. We caught up with the Minister of Small Business Development, Lindiwe Zulu, to find out more about government's role in supporting industrialists. Well, government identified the need for the development of black industrialists in particular. And this, of course, is based on the fact that government realized that without uh, the economic, radical economic transformation, this uh, country, in as far as its economic development is concerned, would lose a lot. And therefore, the focus on building black industrialists is a responsibility of government. In fact, government declared that we need to have uh, 100 uh, black industrialists. And my view is that it's possible to develop and assist even more than that 100. Minister, you've been engaging with some of your colleagues on an international uh, scale. Uh, are there particular lessons that an economy like South Africa can learn from their peers on a global platform uh, to boost industrialization in the country? Absolutely. If the economy can be opened so that at the end of the day, those that were left out of the economy can find themselves within uh, uh, the economic activity of the country, let's start there. Hence, government decided on, on the economic development, the focus on economic development. Secondly, we've got uh, within the departments uh, of government themselves, there are many opportunities that present themselves in the value chain of what government is looking for, which can be produced uh, by our own uh, industrialists. But also there's an opportunity for small and medium enterprises and cooperatives to give either services or products that they are producing to the value chain of government. But we're not only looking at government, we're also looking at what the private sector can do to assist us in this, in this space because at the end of the day, the radical economic transformation that we are talking about cannot be a responsibility of government alone. It has to be a responsibility of everyone in South Africa. But to focus particularly on entrepreneurship, our department in particular of small and medium enterprises is going to be having very focused programs that will be assisting entrepreneurship development. So we are going to be opening up the space to make sure that we train uh, as much as we possibly can. But of course we can't train everybody being in the department, but we're looking at institutions. That's why, for instance, we have uh, uh, discussions with the edu Minister of Higher Education to look at what is it that they can do to encourage people uh, at high school to make sure that they also focus on what will happen when they finish school. They can't be looking only at going out and looking for jobs. An important part of the SABS's role is supporting the youth of South Africa through skills development, something which Dr. Boni Mechamakulu, who has been at the helm of the SABS for the last six years, stated in her opening remarks. For me, young people, represent a vision of the future for this country. And if I drive through the township, 
and I see young people that have um, given up, that are standing by the corner of the street, that are begging for, um, for money, that uh, see no future for themselves or they, they, they don't see their own contribution to the future that they desire uh, for themselves. It makes me sad. So we decided as the Design Institute that we wanted to intervene with the skills and the capacity that we have as a, an organization to help the country deal with the, the issue of youth unemployment. Having played a role in innovation and science and technology, um, technology development policy, I wanted to see those policies at work. And we decided that at the Design Institute, we were not going to write long policies. We were not going to go to government with a nice document and say, Here, here's how it's done. We were going to implement programs and then call our political principals to come and see how it can be done. And today, Minister, we're honored that you are here with us to see the work that young people can do. We would love to scale up for young people in Kuruman, for young people in a village in Pumalanga, for young people in um, Mahlabatini, for young people in Kwanongoma, for young people in Limpompo, for young people in Cape Town, Kwalanga, Ekukuletu, to have this opportunity. After the break, a panel discussion on the development of next generation industrialists, where we'll discuss everything from the challenges to opportunities available for young entrepreneurs out there. See you after this. Hello and a warm welcome to this uh, special of the next industrialist generation for 2015. My name is Kukuletu Tele. Now in today's panel discussion, we'll be taking a look at the role of industrialists in the South African economy who have been earmarked to contribute quite significantly to the country's economic growth. We know that government has its plans as well to uh, launch 100 industrialists by the year 2017 and even more moving forward following the National Development Plan. I'd like to introduce uh, my esteemed panel, with you today. Uh, we will call for audience participation as well during the course of this panel discussion. But closest to me, to my right, is the Honorable Minister of Small Business Development here in South Africa, Ms. Lindiwe Zulu. We also will have uh, Mr. Gavin Mangeni, who is the head of the SABS Design Institute. Next to you, we also have uh, Mrs. Mabo Madibokwe Chokwe, who is the executive head uh, and manager for enterprise development at Transnet. And we've got two industrialists next to you right there, Shelton Motwa, who is the founder of Aeon, and Mzukisi Mbane, a designer uh, who's launched a new product here in South Africa. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we also have our audience members with us and industrials and fellow stake stakeholders is with us this evening and they will also be participating very actively in this panel discussion but not to waste any more time minister to address the first question to you uh, in your most recent address you've made it very clear that government is available government is supportive and government has a plan and government will be held accountable to the development of industrialists in the south african uh, economy how far are we in implementing that plan and uh, what is the outlook going forward well, recall um, that uh, when the president made his State of the Nation address, he referred particularly to the radical economic transformation that we would like to see, and particularly the empowerment uh, of black people that were left out uh, of the economic processes. Remember also the fact that the president himself was saying, we've got the, the political power, we now need to focus to economic power. And economic power, obviously, starts with ensuring that 
the people that were left out now are given an opportunity to be developed into what we call the black industrialists. Of course, the Department of Trade and Industry, together with the Department of Economic Development and our department, are collectively working together to make sure that we develop programs that will target particularly youth. Now, developing black industrialists is not something that you wake up in the morning and do overnight. It is a process. It entails education. It entails commitment. It entails commitment firstly by the government, but it also entails commitment by the people that you are trying to empower in making sure that they take advantage of the opportunities that are presenting themselves. Education can never be replaced by anybody when it comes to the development of black industrialists. And something else that you did allude to as well is collaboration. And Gavin, maybe this brings us to uh, you as well as the role and the influence of the Design Institute here at SABS. Are we finding that, that we are working more effectively together? I think it's important for us to understand that the biggest problem on the South African landscape is not the absence of policy. Besides the implementation of policy and also not neither the absence of funds, it is about one space where you have an integrating force, where an entrepreneur can go to a one-stop hub, where somebody can go and get all the assistance needed to pave the way for a growth path into becoming a successful entrepreneur. So the South African environment really lacks an entrepreneurial ecosystem, and that is the space where the Design Institute has started playing. We cannot look at the existing landscape and expect new jobs to come from the private sector whilst we are importing 90% of the products that we could and should have produced locally. So within this particular space, it has become one of those zones where any entrepreneur can come and we will assist from ideation phase, unlocking the partnerships that sits on the existing landscape, making sure that the agencies that's been put there by um, government bring are brought together into one space and pave the way for the entrepreneur. And that is what the SBS Design Institute has been successful with over the past 20 months. Madiboka, to come to you, uh, you obviously deal with enterprise development and, and cultivating supply chains uh, for a well-known state-owned entity. Are we making progress with regard to this there? Uh, and are you finding those entrepreneurs like Shelton and Mzukisa here that uh, are able to conform to this tough environment? We are making a lot of progress. In fact, um, in Transnet, we don't only have enterprise development initiatives, but we also have an element of supplier development where we make sure that even when we contract with OEMs or large organizations, we make sure that they come up with a supplier development plan that will then factor people like the Sheltons that are young entrepreneurs, emerging entrepreneurs. So through our enterprise development programs as well, as you know, we also have a program with SABS that we design specifically for the young ones and also targeting those that are in schools as well so that we go to those rural areas, go to those high schools and nurture the culture of entrepreneurship or rather teach them about entrepreneurship. But not only that, combining it also with the element of design, where we partner them with a design engineer and they assist them to come up with innovative ideas that we can even take from, a, from being an idea up until commercialization. Mm -hmm. So yes, we do have uh, initiatives that even assist these uh, emerging entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Gavin, to come back to you, because clearly that's the basis and the format that the uh, Design Institute is obviously based on. Are we ensuring that the relevant innovation is taking place in the right avenues for, to, that will drive economic growth in South Africa? Because just to use the two entrepreneurs uh, on this panel with us, one is in fashion, one is in technology, uh, two vast and very far removed industries, but both with significant growth potential. I think there's still a total misunderstanding around what the word innovation really means. Mm. And specifically within South Africa, when we talk innovation, we tend to go to technology and science. Mm. And innovation is a practice, it is a business tool, it is a service, it is something that is new. And when you couple it with design, the basic element what design means is, is there a user and what does the user want? So let me break it down. What is new that a new user want? Mm. Let's make it. That's innovation design. So we need to stop being limiting 
ourselves with regards to the utilization of the word innovations. And then there's a bigger aspect, and I normally make a joke in my office, do not invite me or do not um, RSVP to these award schemes that look at good ideas. Good ideas on papers are not innovations, that's inventions. You can only call it an innovation when that good idea on paper translate to a user in a market. Mm. So when you start looking at these new industrialists, we also need to start limiting our view on what industrialist means. An industrialist in our view for the South African context means what's the new industries? Is there a fashion industry that we can create economic equity about? It makes him an industrialist because he navigates the landscape to create economic equity and create new jobs. It makes Sheldon an industrialist, even though we narrate within a technology space. So the principle that we utilize within the Design Institute is transdiscipline. So hence you have arts and culture, you have fashion, you have technology. The problem is that we start compartmentalizing new job growth by looking at the physical sphere which we want to compartmentalize it around. If you go to the far east of our global economy, they push out everything. Mm. And if you start looking at the fast forward economies, the SBS Design Institute form part of 180 countries that has design institutes, which pushes out new entrepreneurs, new products, new services. So, I hope that makes sense, that we need to stop limiting ourselves through concepts which we've inherited definitions from. It makes sense, especially when you put it in the context of China experiencing GDP growth of around 7%, Minister, and South Africa only around 2%. Right. Mzukis, I want to come to you, Mr. Yes. Fashionista, since we've uh, bestowed that name upon you. Uh, Transdiscipline is a term that Gavin just alluded to a moment ago. From your perspective as an entrepreneur and someone who is a young industrialist in a field which many might feel is oversaturated, yeah. how do you find that this quality might work towards your benefit and that of the overall economy? For myself, I think it's firstly focusing on the fashion industry because when I, when I approach, uh, I'll go from an, from an investor's point of view. When I say I'm a fashion designer, I'm always grouped within what a designer is and I'm actually perceived as to what actually do I do and to what market do I cater to. So for me, it's mostly about understanding what me as a designer is, understanding my identity. That's, that speaks to understanding to the, the market that I cater to. Because myself, I'm, I'm, I'm a fashion designer, but I'm creating something different from the location that I come from to the way that I sell fashion from my own perspective. So, Given just only that, which is my identity and, when I, where, and where I came from, it's already to my advantage. But because people tend to group what fashion is or have certain per per perception of what the fashion industry is, especially in the South African context, it's, it, it kind of limits us a lot. I want us to across to the floor because I do know that uh, some of our uh, audience members do have some questions. Yes, my name is Helen Brown. I'm a board member of TIA and um, I lead strategic projects at the MERCETA, Sector Education and Training Authority. Um, Minister, Honourable, Honourable Minister, I think your enthusiasm on the industrialist of the future is very inspiring. I find a lot of energy in what you say, and I'm very excited to see and support um, your policies and programs through your new ministry. Um, I hear you about your ideas on implementation, and I also hear Gavin on his uh, definition of innovation. I think these are two very important concepts. I do believe that we have a good innovation system. Um, the policies are right, the agencies are right, the institutions that support these agencies are right, um, but Minister, you're correct. It's, it's the implementation. I would say that the implementation is making huge progress, but the implementation needs efficiency. I'm talking to um, Leek Les and uh, Paseko, who has his product on display here today. And one of my questions to him was, how long have you been working on this? 
Six <coughs> years, Minister. Mm. Yes. Six years. He has had support constantly, but he hasn't reached the market yet. I said, how many ideas have you got behind this? He said, I've got another five or six right now. I just need to get this one into the market. So I'm thinking we need to think creatively about efficiency. We need to say, in an organization like the SABS, through the ministry also, how can we brand new innovations in South African products that become um, part of a scorecard? So if, if you talk about BEE and supply chain management, supply chain management will bring in um, small business suppliers who um, comply with the BEE requirements. But what about the products that they're using in supplying a service? And this is where I think SABS can play a role in identifying those products that we want government to purchase. We can then say to supply chain management in government, as long as this has this mark, you will be earning points in terms of our scoring and our audit of your institution in government. We've not got one hospital, not one government building with a less leak instrument in use. And I think that is, that, is, that is not a good sign in terms of how we diffuse this technology into the market. Yes, um, I think we, we've identified as the Department of Small and Medium Enterprises that there's a need for us to develop a very strong ecosystem. So the issue of efficiency, for instance, uh, uh, comes through there. But of course, the, the issue of market access is what I've repeated over and over again, because I feel that um, uh, that's where the challenge is. But let me also just throw it back to say, it's also about mindset. Mm. Mindset from the people that are supposed to be the ones that are buying the products. And not only, before you even talk about buying, it's the recognition of the fact that if it is South African, you must be proud and buy it proudly because it is South African. Ladies and gentlemen, that's where we leave it for this evening. Hopefully we'll have cultivated uh, some kind of debate and one debate that will continue in the upcoming days. Thanks for joining us today on this special. From the team and myself, it's goodbye.